did you know that dragons really actually exist? And if you're watching this, that you have one on your spirit team as a spirit guide, real dragons are higher dimensional beings, which means they operate on a plane higher than our own. Typically, we operate in the third dimension, whereas dragons, they'll operate in the fifth and above. This means they can't really be seen with the naked eye. However, they can be felt, especially if you have one on your team, which I promise if you're seeing this, you do. The question remains, what elemental affinity does your dragon guide have? Depending on their elemental affinity, they will have specific gifts. And by extension, you will also have those gifts. So for example, a fire dragon, such as my main dragon guide, will help someone uh, burn through energetic obstacles. A water dragon, on the other hand, might give you increased psychic abilities or the ability to have very prophetic dreams. An air dragon is going to be really great at helping you with astral travel. And an earth dragon can be really great for grounding you and centering you when you're feeling off kilter. Of course, there are many more benefits for each elemental affinity. Um, if you would like me to go deeper into that, just let me know in the comments and I can certainly make another video on it. But without further ado, get ready to take notes because I'm about to show you the different qualities and signs that each elemental affinity looks for in a human partner as seen on my TikTok. As you go through, just keep track of how many signs you resonate with and this will help you determine at the end which elemental affinity your dragon guide might have. Is your dragon guide a fire dragon? Fire dragons have specific qualities they look for in a human partner, so let's see if you check the list, shall we? First, a quick cheat is if you have lots of fire in your natal astrology chart. So this would be placements in Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. Two shonen slash shoujo anime protagonist levels of determination. Uh, fire dragons really respect moxie and pluck and all that good stuff. Three, you may have a low tolerance for things that do not ignite your passions. You cannot be bothered. Four, you don't want to waste time. You want things to happen now. You want them to happen quick. Five, it could be easy for you to cut people and situations out of your life. Six, you may be very confident and charismatic. Seven, you may have this strong desire to alchemize negative experiences and see things positively no matter what. Eight, lots and lots of tower slash phoenix moments. Nine, if you're seeing this video, is your dragon guide a fire dragon? Is your dragon guide a water dragon? Water dragons have specific qualities they look for in a human partner, so let's see if you check the list. One, lots of water in your natal astrology, so signs in Pisces, Cancer, and Scorpio. Two, tendencies to be quite psychic or or creative or identify as a healer. Three, kind of going off the last one, you might have a very vivid dreamscape, have a lot of dreams. Four, you may be highly sensitive and empath and just really in touch with your emotions. Five, you could have a tendency to be depressed or just all around feel like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. Six, you may identify as a shapeshifter or chameleon and just have an easy time adapting. Seven, you might have clean freak tendencies. Eight, you may be very kind and giving even to a fault. Nine, you may be mysterious even to yourself to the point where you don't really know what you want. 10, you might just be drawn to water and like swimming. And 11, if you're watching this, your dragon guide and earth dragon. Earth dragons have many qualities they look for in a human partner. So let's see if you check the list, shall we? One, you likely have lots of earth in your natal astrology. So that would be signs in Taurus, Capricorn, and Virgo. Two, you may be quite stubborn and resistant to change. Three, at the same time, you might be what TV tropes refers to as a determinator. You're very persistent and tend to get what you want eventually. Four, you're very drawn to nature. You may feel more comfortable outside or just living in rural areas in general. Five, you have a strong, steady work ethic. Six, you have an affinity for animals. Maybe they are drawn to you. Maybe you have a lot of pets. Maybe you even talk to them. Seven, you may enjoy gardening or other outdoorsy, hands-on activities like hiking. Eight, you may be vegetarian, vegan, or somewhere on that spectrum. Nine, you may have always felt very deeply for Mother Earth and been very conscious and vocal about being green. Ten, if you're watching this. If you're watching this, they could be an air dragon. Let's see if you check the list. First sign is that you are an air sign in your natal astrology or that you just have a lot of air energy. So that would be signs in Libra, Aquarius, or Gemini. Two, you're talkative, maybe to a fault. Three, you may be very intelligent, maybe a little bit of a genius, and interested in any and all pursuits of the mind. That being said, you could be really fun-loving and like a perpetual child. Five, you may often have dreams of flying, or at least did when you were a child. Six, you may look to the sky a lot, find that you enjoy flying in planes. Seven, you could be really flighty, spaceful, forgetful, maybe even have ADD, ADHD. Whether introverted or extroverted, you likely have a strong fascination with people and a desire to connect. Nine, freedom is very important and you don't like to get attached. 10, if you're watching this. So what do you think? Based on the aforementioned qualities, which elemental affinity does your dragon guide have? 
Know that a dragon can have more than one elemental affinity and you can have more than one dragon guide. So if you have more than one element resonating, this is likely why. There are also rare elemental affinities such as light, darkness, and ether, and more. Um, if you would like me to go more into those, like this video, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what exactly you would like to see more of. And if you would like some assistance or resources for going deeper into this and discovering your own dragon guide, head to my website, which will be in the notes. I have a couple guided meditations designed specifically to help you meet and connect more deeply with your guide. And I also channel your guide for you through tarot. And I can also um, meet with them and draw a picture of them, which can then make it easier for you to connect in meditation. And finally, everything on my Spirit Guides 101 page will be applicable to your Dragon Guide as well because they are also a Spirit Guide. So again, friends, I would love to hear any feedback you have for me in the comments. Let's get the party started down here. And until next time, stay powerful.